Dame Elizabeth Frink was one of Britain's most prominent sculptors of the mid to late 20th century. You can see here a self-portrait head, and we're lucky enough to care for her records at the Dorset History Centre. She was fascinated by animals and made uh, many models of those earlier in life, working in plaster and later cast in bronze. Uh, masculinity was also a big theme throughout her life's work and later in life when she was a bit older and needed to work at a smaller scale she worked on images of the green man a figure from the mists of British folklore a kind of nature god a protector of trees and she uh, portrays him with leaves crossing his mouth which it's hard to tell whether they're growing from him or gagging him have a go yourself at making a green man head uh, following the instructions of Debbie Hello, I'm Debbie Clark and I'm from Creative Clay for All. Today I'm going to be making a green man inspired by Elizabeth Frink. We'll be using salt dough and anything that you have around the house. So we will be using a plate, knife, fork, baking paper and you will have already received your recipe for the salt dough. Now the really important thing to do is to make sure that you're making your creation on the baking paper. So if you make it on your table or anywhere else, then you might find that you've made something really beautiful and it's stuck to the surface and you won't be able to get it off. So when we've made our creation, we'll be able to lift it up on the baking paper, place it on our plate and pop it in the microwave. Makes life so much easier for you. With the salt dough, you need to make sure that it's nice and malleable, nice and squishy, but when you roll it into a ball or make it into a sausage, if you stand it up, it doesn't start sinking so that it will keep all the details. If you find that your salt dough, when you make it into a shape and stand it up, starts sinking to the ground and losing its shape, just add a little bit more flour to it and then it will be nice and ready to use. The other thing with the salt dough is that you need to make sure that you're really over exaggerating any marks that you make in the dough. So as you push down and make marks for the leaves or across the face or the eyeballs, you will need to uh, really push down hard onto those and really exaggerate the marks because the salt dough will start to expand a little bit when it's microwaved. So we're going to start now. You'll have your piece of salt dough and we're going to squish it and divide it into two. Our first half, we will just hit or roll in your hands however you prefer, just to make it nice and soft and smooth. I'm going to pinch it out a bit like making a pizza dough. So if you're making a pizza at home, you just squish it between your fingers and start to ease that dough out. And I'm just moving that around now. So you can see we've got a nice oval shape. It's still quite small at the moment, so I'm going to place it down and then use my hands to squish in. If you've not got so much use of your hands, you can use this bit, you can use your elbow, just use whatever works for you and push that salt dough down and squish it in until you've got a really nice surface. I'm going to squish it between my fingers again. So hopefully you'll have a really nice oval shape. If you don't have an oval shape, don't worry about it, you can squish it back into a ball, roll it back up and start again, it's really forgiving. If it gets too dry out, just put a little bit of water on your hands. Not too much, you don't want to drown it. So we've got our starting figure just here. The next thing we're going to do is, if you've had a look at Elizabeth Frink's Green Men, they're fabulous, they really are, but she puts lots of marks across them. She's really sort of um, put lots of lines across the face, down the nose, across the cheekbones. So we're going to do that before we put any of the nose, the mouth on, before anything gets in the way. So I'm going to use the side of a fork. You might want to use your knife, you might want to, to use the fork shapes. So you can drag the fork across. I'm going to use it sideways and I'm going to use the curve of the fork and really push down to give that furrowed brow, so that the lines across our brow. You can see I'm pushing really deep on there as well. I'm going to do the same for the chin, but I'm going to go this way around with the chin. And I'm going to do some of the cheeks as well. So I'm just going to go along and push some lines into there. So it looks very odd at the moment. doesn't really look like a face at all. 
but now we're going to get started and make the, the actual face. So the first thing I'm going to do is put her nose on there, or his nose. We're going to pull off a little bit of the salt dough and make a carrot shape. So I'm squishing that salt dough in my fingers to make a triangle. Now if you're not too sure how to do that, if I roll it between my hands I've got a sausage shape. If I just point that at the end like this and then roll it in my hands, you'll have a beautiful little carrot shape, like one of those posh Chantilly carrots. When we've done that, we're going to place that down on our person in the middle and then I'm going to push it with my fingers, pinching it so that we've got a really nice line along here and pushing down here. Now it's really important because everything when it cooks will sink a little bit and it will also inflate a little bit, we want to over exaggerate all the features. So we want a really nice big bulbous nose so that it will still show as a nose at the end of it all. So I've got a really nice big point on the end of my nose there. I'm going to now get two small pieces of the salt dough, about the size of a normal pea, and I'm going to roll those in my hand, one each side, and that's going to give these two parts of your nose either side here. And then the fun bit. So finally what we're going to do is we're going to get our fork here and we're going to put two nose holes with our fork just to give the nostrils there as well. So I've got quite a nice rounded fork. You might want to use an old pen um, or anything else that you've got around the house that you think might work well for it. The next thing we're going to do is to do two eyes. So I'm going to roll two balls of the salt dough. And I would say these are about the size of a Brussels sprout. You can leave them as circles if you'd like to or you can point them at the edges to make them more eye shaped. The lovely thing about Elizabeth Frink is that she was looking for the essence of the person when she was creating her, her people or the essence of the animals when she was creating her horse sculptures. So you don't have to have it looking exactly like a person. You can have it just showing those kind of features, the idea that it might be there. So it's however you want to do it and making it your own creation. So I've got two eyeballs now and again you'll see that they're very rounded still. We've not flattened them too much at all so that they'll still show up really nicely when we microwave this at the end. And again I'm going to use the end of my fork and I'm just going to push down right in the middle. This does two things, it's joining the eyeballs onto here and also it's creating some really nice indentations for the eye sockets. You might prefer to push them down slightly and to roll little tiny balls of clay to put for the pupils in the middle. It's your choice, it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. So before we get on with the fun bit of the, the leaves and the mouth, I'm just going to do some lines across the nose before we get any more details on here. So I'm going to use the side of the fork again. I'm going to support it with my finger on this side because otherwise we'll get a really wonky nose. So I'm just going to hold it here and just use my fork to make some lines on here. And again, I'm going to hold it on this side just very gently and make some lines on this side. So you've got some really nice patterns going on on your green man now. The next bit I'm going to do is put the lips on there. If you have a look at Elizabeth Frink's beautiful green men, she's got a lot of the vines coming out of the mouth and then they're curling up and going around the face. So we can do that too. So it's entirely up to you how you want to have the mouth. You could actually just stick your fork in there and have a big open mouth and a big sort of O, as if, oh dear, what on earth's going on with all these leaves everywhere? So I'm going to put one half, just a sausage of clay, and I've squidged the ends so it looks almost like a little baby banana now, doesn't it? So this is going to be the bottom lip. 
So the top lip, I'm just going to fold another sausage of clay, pinch it at the ends here. So we get a nice straight banana effect. And if you want to, you can just pop your finger in the top there to create that nice lip shape. So just pop a finger down there and you'll get that lovely lip effect. And now if I just spin this round so you can see it nicely, I've placed the lips on here. I've got them slightly open because I'm going to put some vines in. You can shut them. You can have the um, mouth shape with the O going on there. However you feel happy to do that. And whilst it's spun round this way, I'm just going to show you the vines coming out of the mouth as well and then wandering up the face. So I'm going to get a tiny bit of salt dough and roll that around in my hands. We want to have them very, very thin. So thinner than the lips. And you can see it's almost like a little wiggly worm on there now, isn't it? So we can pop that in. I've almost got a point on this side, so that's the side I'm going to go for to pop into the mouth and then wiggle up the side of the face. And like other vines as well, we want to have quite a few of these so that we can put all the leaves on there. So we're starting with the vines going up and we've got our second wiggly worm here and just move it around. And you'll see today the only pieces of equipment I'm using is a knife and a fork. So you should have these at home as well. If you don't want to use salt dough, you can use clay, you can use modelling clay, you can use anything that you've got around. You could even make this out of icing if you wanted to. The same technique will work well with, with either of those two. So I've got a few of these on here now and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll out an extra couple for that just in case situation. We might not use them but it means that we've got them to hand if we need to pop anything with a leaf there. So that's our nice wiggly worms. I can chop one of those if I need to. The next bit we're going to do is have some fun with the leaves. So we can have leaves overlapping each other. If we start with the first ones, again I'm going to roll a nice ball of it so it's nice and smooth. You can see there's not really any rough edges on there. I'm going to pinch it a little bit with my fingers on either side and then push it down in my hand and it's come out with a really nice leaf shape. If you struggle to make the leaves and you think, oh my goodness, I don't know if I can manage to do that, then the other way you can do it is just get a nice piece of the salt dough. You can see it's a, an interesting shape at the moment. If you get your fork and use that bend of your fork, you can cut into it and there you have a nice leaf shape as well just using the curve of the fork. So whichever thing works best for you, everybody's different and it's nice to um, try different techniques until you find something that you're happy with doing. So I'm going to turn this back around now for a moment whilst I put the leaves on there. I'm just going to have a little look to see where I want to put some. I think I might put one of them on just here and then we're going to use our knife now. So this is just a normal eating cutlery knife, it's not sharp at all, it's what you'd use for your dinners in the evening and I'm going to put, use the back of it actually because it's a bit thicker and we want those really nice strong marks. So I'm going to use the back of the knife and I'm just going to push down all the way along, not quite cutting it all the way through but really nice and deep. So we want some really strong marks. And then I'm going to use the knife to do some leaf marks up there. And you'll find if you look at leaves in the garden, the little lines coming off of them, they don't come off like a V. They tend to be one after another and going up there. So that's the first leaf on there. I'm going to do another leaf just here. And again, exactly the same. I'm just using the back of the knife almost going up to the wiggly worm of the stem and two lines that way and then I'm going to put three in that side there. It's just slightly split there so I should just pop it back in again 
we want to put quite a few of those leaves on there make it really interesting and the other nice thing about the leaves is that if there's a bit of the sculpture that you've made that you're not happy with if you feel that one side of the nose hasn't quite gone the way you wanted to that's fine you can put a leaf over it and then nobody will see what you you don't like about it so that's a lovely thing that you can do with it so if you want to have them slightly going over the eyes or over the nose it's entirely up to you how you want to do it so I'm going to put another leaf and this one is now overlapping the first one so that's why it's really important just to put all of that leaf texture on first then we can put a second leaf just slightly over the top so if you look at the bushes outside you don't get a lot of space in between them you tend to have them over the top of each other giving a nice bushy effect so I've got that side I'm really happy with I've just got the three leaves on there you might want two or three you might decide to put five or six on there it's entirely your choice so I'm just going to put some more on here as well squishing them either side and then placing them on you want to have the leaves quite thick as I said before some of that detail that you're making in the salt dough will be lost when it's microwaved the reason that that's the case is because the salt dough slightly rises a little bit as it's being cooked so it's much better to make really sharp thick indentations and make some really nice thick leaves as well the other good thing about making the leaves nice and thick is that it will last a bit longer as well for you the thinner you make it the more fragile it's going to be and the more chance it has of breaking later on I've got a little bit of the salt dough left that's fine if you've got some left you can pop it into a sandwich bag wrap it up and you can use it for something else later on so it's not wasted you may find that when you've left it in a sandwich bag for a week or so it will just get a bit of condensation on it and get a little bit softer if that's the case just add a bit more flour to it so you can see we've made our creation on the baking paper as I said earlier this is so that we've not got it stuck to the table at the end of it all and it's nice and easy to lift up so when we've finished we can lift it onto a plate we've not had to disturb our creation or peel it off at all and it's right ready to go into our microwave so this is the lovely one that we've made today so when it's gone into the microwave for three minutes it's going to be very very hot which is why we're leaving it on a plate best not to touch it for a few minutes once it's in the microwave and it's, it's finished with its cooking it will be very soft at this point a little tiny bit of brown around the edges if you leave it to cool down completely for about five or ten minutes just poke it with your fingers if it's still too soft where you've got quite a thick area for example where the eyeballs or the nose are just pop it back on the plate pop it in the microwave for another minute again and again just leave it for it to cool down um, and touch it and make sure it's okay so depending on how big or how thick your creations are it may need a little bit longer than three minutes so this one's come out of the microwave you can see now that those indentations that we made in the leaves the leaves have just sunk down a little bit in the face the nose has sunk down a little bit into the face but because we've been really making quite nice big strong marks across our leaves and across our face we've still got most of those showing and intact so you can leave it like this if you want to or you can have some more fun with it so if you prefer to you can use poster paints and this is my here's one I've made earlier so this one's using poster paints you can use acrylics whatever you've got around the house and I've used yellow and green and then I've just mixed the yellow with the green to make some lighter greens for the lips and for all of the leaves and if you have a look at Elizabeth Frink's Green Men you'll see that her drawings of the Green Men before she made the sculptures she's used some really thick black lines to mark those lines that we made earlier so I've just emulated what Elizabeth Frink has done so emulated is I've just looked at what she's done and done something similar to that as well the style of her and I've just popped the black lines across and I've made the vine leaves 
nice and black along there as well. And that's your finished piece. So you'll need to leave it to dry, dry out completely. If you want to add anything else to it, you can always paint a bit of PVA glue over the top to give it a shiny effect. Otherwise, here's your beautiful creation.